Hello, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a custom 3D mockup using Cinema 4D. Um, many times you might not find the right mockup that you want to use when you are presenting a product or a logo. And um, it's easy if you have some 3D knowledge to create your own custom 3D mockups, which will make your product look a lot attractive and in exactly in the way that you want it. So I had in mind this design for a honey bottle. So a uh, ceramic bottle with a rug on top of it uh, to give it an organic feel. So here I'm in Cinema 4D and uh, we're going to start by creating the bottle, right? So it's basically a mason jar sort of structure. So I can um, do that with a spline, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front view, maximize that front view choose the spline tool and I'm going to draw a spline like this. So I'm going to just do that. Maybe just a curved edge like this and then go up straight up. So what I want to do right now is to create a lathe which basically make a mesh out of this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to the modifier. I'm going to take the lathe and I'm going to add the spline into the lathe. So we can have, we can see that we have the shape of our bottle or the container right now. So there are a lot of things that you can do with it. You can now scale it down if you don't exactly want that sort of radius on your project. For this, I think um, the object can have a little bit of height uh, in the Y axis. I'm going to just make it a little high, right? And I think this is, this is looking good, right? So I want that right now. Now, a uh, couple of other things that we need to do is um, we need to go to the lathe and you can see that there is a lot of uh, glitches or jagged edges right here. So that's because of the subdivision count. So we can increase the subdivision a little bit. So I'm just going to change it to, let's say 40. So you can see that now this is a lot smoother, right? So, and another thing is that it doesn't have any thickness right now. It's just a plane. So it looks artificial right now the bottle is going to definitely have some sort of some amount of thickness in here so to do that i'm going to go to the simulate and go to cloth and add a cloth surface so i'm going to parent the lathe to the cloth surface and now let's zoom a little closer so that we can see the changes so i'm going to select the cloth surface and if i increase the thickness we can see that the bottle is getting some sort of depth into it right some sort of data which is there. This is cool, right? So I think that's fine. So we have our body of the bottle. Now we need a top, right? We need a uh, lid for this. So to do that, I'm going to go uh, back to the four view. I'm going to take the top view, maximize that, and I'm going to take a cylinder to create the gap, right? So we have a cylinder. Let's scale it up. Now, if you zoom back, the problem with the scaling, what happened is that we scaled it uniformly. So it is really, really big. We want the height of the cylinder to be uh, a little less, right? So we can go to coordinates. We can bring down the height yeah, and move it up so we can see how this is fitting. Yeah. All right. Maybe a little. Yeah, I think this is cool. Right, so we can move it and sort of fit it right here like this. So we have the lid. Now what we need, another thing that we need is to uh, make the edges of this a little rounded, right? Right now it's very sharp. So we have to create this level of smoothness here also. So to do that, let's go to display, turn on the shading so we can see the topology of the mesh. So we need to actually increase this a little bit. So let's go to object. Let's increase the rotation segment to 40. Right. We can see that it's slightly more smooth. Maybe we can put it to 60 and the height segments, we can put it to four, right? We have this right now. Let's go to caps and let's turn on fillet. So we are getting the rounded corners that we need. Um, so I think it is looking pretty good. So we don't have to do much changes here. Yeah. So that's, that's good enough, right? So let's turn off the garage shading. Let's take the objects, both the objects and let's put them in the, into a group. So select both of this, hold shift to select both of them together, press Alt G on your keyboard. So this actually puts 
the objects that you've selected into a null, right? Null group, basically. So you can rename that to, let's call it the container, right? So in the container, we have it. Now, before we move forward, let's create our lighting setup, right? So it'll be easy for us to quickly render and see how it looks at every stage of our production. So let's click a floor. So click this button to create a quick floor. So we have a floor right now, it's just looking good. And we are going to create a physical sky. So let's create a physical sky. We can change the time and location by coming here. If you want some sort of other, okay. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is we need to make a couple of changes in our um, renderer. So let's go to settings. Let's change it to physical render. And let's add the global illumination uh, effect. So right now we have it. Let's take a quick render and see how this looks. So control R, the shortcut for um, quick render. Yeah, mm, this looks pretty cool, right? So we have uh, our model right now. What I need to do is that I need to illuminate the whole scene with an HDRI map. So HDRI maps are high dynamic range images, which lets you illuminate the scene by using that image data, right? So what we need to do is that I've downloaded a, an HDRI image map. So let's go to my source folder and you can see an HDR file. So the extension is going to be .hdr. So you can drag and drop it right into your material panel. Click no and you can drag it to your physical sky. So right now the physical sky is going to have the image as your data file. So now take our setup. So let's select the sky and the floor and Alt G to group them and let's call it setup. So it's always a better idea to do some housekeeping on your files on layers so it'll be easier for to to manage um, your production pipeline right so we have that in our setup while we are here we can also create a camera so let's click on a camera and we are actually seeing through the camera right now and let's put it into our setup so we also have a camera right now so since everything is set right now uh, what we need to do is to create some basic materials to put in in this object right so let's go to create and create a new material um, I think the body of the thing, I want it to be white itself, but I need to change some properties in here. So I'm going to go to reflectance and I'll turn off the, uh, or remove the default setting, which comes with it. Just click remove here. I'm going to add a legacy reflection. So it comes in like that. This is a very sharp reflection right now, but if I reduce the layer intensity, I can see my images affecting like this. So this is pretty good right so now if i take it and drag it to the body my uh, image is going to have this uh, we are going to duplicate this material which we gave it to the bottle so just hold control and drag it so it creates a copy what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the settings of that in the reflection tab i'm going to increase the roughness of this a, a lot right so what i want to do is that i want to use this as the ground texture so i'm going to just drop it there I want to also create a new material for the lid. So let's make it slightly brown. So I can turn off the reflectance here. I can go to the color and make a brown texture. So something like that. And just drag and drop it here. So we have that also. Let's take a quick render and see how it looks. Oh. <laughs> so now our setup is complete. Right, so we have a setup and our container. Now it's time to do the rug part of the text, right? So we need to bring in the rug here. So to do that, what we're gonna do is to use a cloth simulator, right? So the cloth is going to act as the rug covering the surface of our object. So to do that, let's go to the top view of our scene. So let's come here. So in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a plane and this plane is going to act as our cloth, right? So switch back to our main view. We can see the plane right here and we will raise it up. Let's call it cloth. Okay. Now, uh, just to see how this is working, we can come here to the display, change this to line. For the cloth modifier to, to work perfectly, we need to have as many segments as possible on the um, cloth object so we can increase the segments perhaps to 40 width and 40 height so this is now decent so we can increase the scale a bit so that it needs to cover uh, the bottle as well so yeah i think this works right 
what we are going to do now is we are going to say that this is cloth object so we're going to right click and we are going to go to simulation tag and select cloth from there and also another thing that we need to do is that when the cloth is falling we need the lid and the bottle to be acting as colliders so that the cloth will not fall through it right so we're going to go to the cylinder we're going to right click this and go to simulation tag and say that this is a cloth collider and the cloth surface also we are going to go to the simulation tag and select cloth collider so these are cloth colliders right now and we have the cloth so for cloth simulation so if you play right now nothing is going to happen because for the cloth simulation to work the object needs to be in edit mode so you can just come here and you can click on this button so now this is an edit mode now if you play the simulation it's going to go down and it's going to fold down like that right it creates the rug that we require okay and it's looking pretty cool right so we'll just stop it there we can uh, get back from the edit mode and we can turn off the lights display so you can see this now uh, there is one problem that you can quickly notice here because you can see a lot of jagged pixels you know distortions which is happening in the cloth even though the simulation is right there is a lot of distortion happening there that's because this is a single plane there is no thickness into it so and the so the number of polygons which is in there is not enough to give a smooth cloth simulation so what we're going to do is we're going to select the cloth and add a subdivision modifier into it so if you press alt on your keyboard and click on subdivision into the cloth making the cloth a lot more smoother right and now we what another thing that we can notice is that we are seeing some glitch we are seeing the rectangle through uh in the lid through the cloth so that's an easy fix what you can do is you can go to the container select the cylinder and move this a bit down right so we have that also fixed right now we can now take this subdivision surface which is basically the cloth and we can put it un inside the container so everything actually becomes there we can name it so that everything is uh properly named this is the lid and this is the container so we have the cloth lid and the container body let's call it the body okay so now everything is set everything is in one uh, in one folder so right now if you if you play it again there is still the simulation so we will not be able to do much with it uh, so now we don't need the cloth simulator here because we have the object captured in the right position we can remove the cloth property from our object so we can just come here we can delete the cloth property from the object so right now what happens is that you can select the cloth and you can move it around without tampering the animation right so that's a really good feature right so we have that also here now what we need to do is that we need to apply a material to this and for that i have an image downloaded so i'm going to go to my asset folder here again and i have this sag texture it needs to be applied here so i can just drag and drop it to the material panel click no and just drag and drop it to our uh, rug selection so we can also do some sort of modifications here just go down we can add some bump value so i'm going to go to the bump here i'm going to select the bump i'm taking off the reflectance i don't want the surface to be reflected so if i go to the bump what i can do is i can uh, load the same image so that texture and it's going to copy the same image and it's going to create some sort of bumps we can also add an alpha channel here <coughs> to create some sort of transparency uh, in the gaps here so let's try that so let's go to alpha channel click on alpha channel and uh, you can load a texture we can load the same image or if you have a black and white image of that it's going to work really cool so I'm going to take that and it's going to create a transparent effect of the same sack. So let's try and see it. So now you can see there is a little bit of transparency here, right? Uh, so you can see through the uh, sack and you can see what is happening behind the uh, sack, right? So this is, that's a pretty cool effect also. That is something that we can work with, right? So you can see if you look at the shadow also, it's actually casting a really interesting shadow right now rather than a plain black shadow it is creating a pattern shadow which looks a little more realistic right so that's how uh, we did the rug texture so we need to add um, now the logo right it's time to actually bring our logo to this so 
if you go to my asset folder, so this was the initial plan that we had and uh, we almost made the body. Now to put the logo here, I made a logo in Illustrator, a very simple logo and uh, I want to bring that there. So to do that, to use uh, as a placeholder for the logo, I'm going to create a disk. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click on a disk. So we right now have a disk like this, right? So I'm going to just scale it down, right? So we have a disk right now. To this disk, we, I'm going to add the logo, right? So let's bring in the logo. So create new material. And in that material, let's bring in our logo. <clears throat> so remove the reflectance or let the reflectance be there. And in color, I'm going to bring in the um, logo. So we have the logo image right here. But at the same time, I need some space, a white space around it. And I need this to be transparent. I don't want it to be a circular logo. So I'm going to go to alpha here again, just like what we did for the SAC. I'm going to go to alpha channel and load the PNG image in the alpha channel as well. So we are going to get the logo in that shape. So if we apply the logo here, you can see that we are getting the logo in that shape. So right now we are not able to see it because there is no light here. So let's choose our physical sky and change the time a bit. So now the logo is looking pretty cool, right? But now the next step is that we want this logo to be attached to this in the same shape of the container, right? So it is slightly bent and all that. So the option, the easiest way to do that is to project this object into the um, container, right? So to do that, let's go to the front view. We are in the front view of the object right now. Let's move it where we exactly want the logo. Right. And we can also, for the time being, we can just move this um, away. We can bring it back later. So we only have the logo and this body. Right. So we're going to select the disk and we are going to go to the character commands and click on project object. And we are going to say before doing that, we have to make sure that this is also in edit mode. Right. And we are going to say that this needs to be projected to the container. So by selecting the disk, we are going to go to character, commands, project object, and click on project to surface. So we can now see that the logo is slapped onto the surface. We cannot see it here because it's it went a little inside. So all we need to do is that bring that a little out. So what we need to do is we need to actually create a uh, sort of a band which holds this thing together. So for that, I'll just create a torus on top. So let's go to the top view here and let's create a torus, right? Bring it up and we can now reduce the uh, pipe radius so that it sort of seems like a very light band which holds together the um, the rug right so we'll just raise it a bit let's move it up a bit let's see how that actually looks here the doors let's bring it a little forward and to the top So let's add the brown texture into this as well. So we have a tiny, teeny tiny uh, rug which just holds the bottle together. So that's basically it. This is how you can make a custom 3D model of any object that you like, especially when you want to showcase a product uh, in your own way. And this adds a lot of value to your projects when you're creating your own uh, mockups because there is no redundancy in uh, the same kind of mockups that you're using every day. It will look fresh. It'll also give a totally different vibe to your project. Try it out, tweak it, let me know your thoughts. And uh, if you like the video, just subscribe uh, to my channel and I'll be putting up a lot more tutorials soon. I'll see you uh, with another video soon. Until then, take care, bye.